Hello again. In this video, we're going to talk about something non-standard uh, in the, the terminology. Uh, what I'm actually doing mathematically is incredibly standard. Okay, so uh, I like to talk about something called coins. And um, uh, best way to get into it is just to draw a little picture. But that picture will make a lot more sense once I give you just a, a tad bit of notation. So the first thing is uh, if I write this letter that is the greek letter epsilon okay so this is spelled e p s i l o n which is important if for example you want to write it up in latex uh, so this is a greek letter okay and what you are going to see very 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 often in this class is us using epsilon to denote a positive real number and typically a small one but it doesn't have to be, right? It actually can be just any positive real number. So one of the most common expressions you'll see in this class is let epsilon be greater than zero, right? Which is shorthand for let epsilon be some positive real number. Now, let's say I have some real number A, so, right? So let's actually, no quotes around this one. Let A be some real number, okay? And let Ah, our first instance of it, let epsilon be greater than zero. So I want to look at a certain type of interval. So I'm going to write down here a minus epsilon, right? So I subtract this positive number. So this is something which is going to be strictly smaller than a. And then I'm going to take a and I'm going to add epsilon. Again, since a is positive, this is going to be something strictly greater than epsilon. Okay, and I use the uh, per parentheses on either side. And so this is looking at, okay, so this is equal to the set of all real numbers that are strictly greater than a minus epsilon. So that are strictly, so it means they're not equal to a minus epsilon. So strictly greater than a minus epsilon, and strictly less than a plus epsilon. So strictly less than a plus epsilon. Okay. Now, it's very wordy as I've written it down. So let's write this in what we call set builder notation. So I use the, the set curly brace. All right, and then I'm gonna say here, this is gonna be all real numbers so I write x, say, as a, what a, a, an arbitrary real number might look like. So remember, in set builder notation, what comes before this vertical bar is the form of an element. What does it look like? Well, it's a real number. That's not very interesting, but OK, it is. Then this bar means such that, OK? And then what comes after it is going to be a condition or conditions on x. Okay, in this case, we're going to have two conditions. The first condition on x is that it needs to be strictly greater than a minus epsilon. The second condition is that it needs to be strictly less than a plus epsilon. Okay, so this is a, another way to write it, certainly less wordy than the way above. And of course, we also could draw a picture of this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a minus epsilon here and a plus epsilon over there. I use the parentheses on this chart so that I know not to include a plus epsilon or a minus epsilon. Uh, you might also do it in the following way. Uh, we could put a little open dot at a minus epsilon and a plus epsilon. And then I'm going to put a here, and it looks like it's in the middle, and that's, well, that's because it is. All right, the distance between a and a plus epsilon is epsilon. And the distance between a and a minus epsilon is also epsilon. So this a is actually in the middle. All right, so I could, I could draw it either way. I happen to see these parentheses maybe a little bit better, so I'll do that more often, but it doesn't have to be that way. All right, okay. So in any case, I have built now what is called, well, in any time you have uh, 
a set like this where you're going from one number to another number, but you don't include the endpoints, it's called an open interval. Okay, but this is a special type of open interval, at least as far as A is concerned. It's an open interval where A is smack dab in the center. So we actually might even call this an A-centered open interval. Okay, that's a long expression. So what I did is I said, well, you got a C there, you got an O there, and let's take the IN from interval. And so I'm going to call this an A coin. Okay, A C O I N, centered open interval. Okay, and if I need to tell you how big the interval is, that is, what is the radius, right, how far from A to the endpoint, I could say an A coin with radius epsilon. Okay, so that's what this guy here is. And we are going to spend all semester looking <laughs> at A coins. All right, and sometimes we'll know what the epsilon is, other times we just know there is some A coin. Okay, so we're going to try to get used to this notation a bit. It's going to give us some alternate ways uh, of describing certain notions in analysis than what are normally used, uh, and, and I think it should be uh, pretty handy. All right, we'll see you next time.